Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. This is my prediction for 2020. Now, 2019 was mega for e-mountain bikes. There was so many new launches, new mountain bikes, new brands, new technology, and I predict that 2020 is gonna be even bigger. I get lots and lots of questions around what's coming, what do I think, but I honestly don't know, but here are some of my predictions for 2020, and this is my best guess of what's gonna happen in the next 12 months in electric mountain biking. First of all, if you're not subscribed, I bring out weekly e-mountain bike videos. So click the subscribe button to be kept up to date with everything electric mountain bike related. All right, number one, I think this year we're gonna see a whole range of cheaper electric mountain bikes be launched. We've already seen Radon bring out their amazing render and it looks like it's fantastic value for money. Check out that video preview that I've done. I'm going to be testing that bike out soon, but I think we're going to see even more really good priced, good quality electric mountain bikes hit the market. Now, the market is getting saturated and there is more and more competition. So there's no longer two or three or four manufacturers putting out good mountain bikes. There's a whole host of great mountain bikes out there. So the prices are gonna to have to come down or there's gonna to have to be some kind of unique feature from the manufacturers that make people wanna get their particular bike. Check this one out, just this week, Decathlon. This is crazy, Decathlon of Port Al, an electric mountain bike, full suspension, 150 mil RockShox fork, uh, aluminium frame, with the new Bosch Generation CX4 motor that's just come out in all the top of the range uh, electric mountain bikes. And it's 2,699 pounds, which is, I, it's incredible for a full suspension electric mountain bike with that new Bosch motor. And yeah, it's gonna have some cheaper house brand components on it, but I think for 2,699 pounds, it's just, crazy what you're getting for your value for money. The thing for me is I want as many people to ride electric mountain bikes as possible because it promotes people getting outside, it's healthy, it helps you meet new people, it's just a great hobby or sport. The barrier to entry has traditionally been quite expensive to get a, a good quality electric mountain bike. Yes, you can get much, much cheaper bikes, but they don't, in my opinion, use brilliant components. But seeing this come out for £2,699, it's just... On EMTB forums, there's loads of people raving over it. I don't think anyone's taken delivery of it just yet, but that looks fantastic. And I think in 2020, we will see ultra competitive electric mountain bikes. Look at what uh, Go Outdoors did with their brand, their Calibre Boss Nut, when they bought that in and it came out, I think it was like 1200 or 1300 pounds and it just had a top quality selection of components at a really, really reasonable cost. And it made it more accessible for people to get good quality mountain bikes. So I think that's the number one thing that we're gonna see. Better value, really competitively priced electric mountain bikes come in and hit the market. All right, number two, lighter e-mountain bikes. So we've seen bikes go right up to the, you know, the big high bike fly on, that's the big kind of big battery, big travel, 28 kilo e-bike right down to the Mondraker that uh, just got announced recently that's sub 20 kilos. The Lapierre E-Zesty that's got a lower powered motor and a smaller battery. But I think this year we're gonna see more lighter powered electric mountain bikes. Not everybody wants a heavy, high powered electric mountain bike. Lots of people do, but there are still some people that want that lighter weight e-bike that is just a little bit more than a mountain bike will take them a little bit further give them a little bit of assistance the lapier zesty is a bike that did this and i'm sure that we're going to see even more super lightweight electric mountain bikes and perhaps we'll see them from brands that have already got electric mountain bikes out that want to diversify that want to have more bikes in their e-bike portfolio i guess look at lapier they've got full powered electric mountain bikes and then they do the Exesti. Mondraker do full powered e-mountain bikes and then they've got the Crafty RR Carbon that's like 19.4 kilos. So no doubt we're gonna see, who knows how low you can go, 16, 
15, that'd be, I don't think you could get to 15 kilos. I'd be really surprised if you could, but I think this is gonna be the year that we see lighter, lower powered, smaller battery capacity electric mountain bikes that for those riders that just want that extra little bit of power or don't want a full power e-bike have got a decent amount of fitness already i think that that is going to be a prime market this year all right number three e-bikes from manufacturers that are waiting in the wings now i'm looking at you santa cruz yeti there's probably way way more out there but they cannot afford to wait any longer. Like e-bike sales have just escalated astronomically. It's been honestly the savior of many bike shops to be totally honest with you. It's really revolutionized mountain biking again. And you only need to kind of read reports and news articles about how electric bikes, not just mountain bikes, but electric bikes in general are going through a massive growth stage. And for sure, electric mountain biking is as well. So like Santa Cruz, Yeti, who else is there? You tell me down below, but there's surely other brands that have to bring out an electric bike this year. And maybe it will be one of the lighter powered bikes. Maybe it won't be a full on, I know some brands like have been quite anti e-bike or have said in the past that they're not gonna do an electric mountain bike because it's not in their DNA. But what about if they had a lighter weight, more natural feeling electric mountain bike? I ride with people and I've been out on the trails and there's been people that have kind of been on these brands and they're looking at them and I know in their eye, they, they're like, oh, I really, really want one, but they're really loyal to that brand that they've been with for many, many years. And I'm sure as soon as that brand brings out an electric mountain bike, they are banging on that shop door or ordering that bike online to get it delivered. So that's my third prediction, e-bikes from all the brands that don't have them out there. They cannot afford to wait any longer. So number four, Shimano, looking at you, new e-bike motor. The E8000 that's been out for a few years is a good package. It's got a nice neat little screen. They've now got integrated batteries. The motor is quite small and compact and it's a decent all round system. The thing that is letting that motor down is that the battery, the maximum battery that comes on those Shimano bikes is a 500 watt hour battery. Now, there are some brands like YT that have said they're gonna make a, a, their own custom 700 watt hour, but that is quite expensive to do that. It's quite difficult to get it to market. As we've seen from YT, they said it would be out at some point last year. It still doesn't seem like it's quite ready yet. So Shimano, when they bring out their new e-bike motor, which I'm sure, I, by the way, all of this is stuff that I've been thinking of in my head. I do not know. I, I, I do not have any inside information. It's just educated best guesses. But if they do bring out a new motor this year, I'm sure it's gonna have a 600, 650 or 700 or who knows, even, even higher battery capacity because that is one thing that's letting the Shimano motor down. If you're buying a bike with a Shimano motor, the maximum battery capacity you can get is 500 watt hours. And for a lot of people, that's absolutely fine. But for some people, they want a bigger capacity battery. And if they're riding with people that have got bigger batteries, you're always kind of thinking, damn, how much battery have I got? You always have to maybe manage it a little bit. In fact, just last week, we went out on a group ride. There was about seven of us and some of the riders had 700 watt batteries, some had 500, and the people that were on 500 had to turn it right down to eco or turn the bikes off on the flat sections to make sure they didn't run out. So Shimano, new motor coming this year, I think, I'm guessing, fingers crossed, with a larger capacity battery. So number five, I reckon we're gonna see more e-bike specific components. So we've seen stuff like shoes, tires, cassettes, crank arms, grips, saddles, did I say that already? I'm not sure, but pretty much every component on a bike has an e-bike specific stuff. Some actually is really, really worthwhile. Some may be questionable. I mean, what's the difference between a regular shoe and an e-bike shoe or a regular saddle and an e-bike saddle? But look at things like suspension. So Fox have an e-bike specific fork and it's got a thicker stanchion. And they say that e-bikes are a bit heavier there's a bit more force that's put through them because the inertia and the weight that's driving through those forks is greater. It requires a thicker stanchion to beef it up a little bit to take the forces that are put through it. I think that's quite a good idea. I'm sure we'll see more e-bike specific stuff from 
different brands and different manufacturers. In fact, no doubt they're all working on it already and they're all primed for release coming up kind of this spring and summertime. So no doubt we'll see more stuff that's got that little E label on it, uh, whether it's a cleaner or clothing, I reckon we're gonna see way more e-bike specific stuff that will hit the market. Is it marketing? Probably some of it's marketing. Hey, a lot of mountain biking is marketing, but some of it is actually pretty damn good. Number six, more integration. So think about the most basic form of integration has been the battery. A few years ago, most batteries are like mounted onto the frame and you looked at it from a distance and it was obviously an e-bike. You can see the battery, the frame looked like a pretty standard bike frame and they looked quite crudely designed, didn't they? And over the years, the manufacturers have got much, much better with their R&D and their integration of the batteries into the frame. Not all of the brands have got there yet, so Canyon have still got theirs, which is bolted onto the frame. But I think that we'll see the most basic form of integration, which will be the battery. But I also think we'll see more integrated components that work with the battery. So if you think SRAM have Axis, their wireless dropper, and their wireless shifting, that requires a little battery in one part and a little battery in another. Maybe that will be integrated to the main battery. Look at what Grape did with their G6 last year, how there's a screen on it and it has an integrated SIM card within the bike and High Bike have something similar with their eConnect. So if the bike's picked up and moved, it will send an alert through to your phone. It's always on, it's always connected. We saw Fox launch their live suspension system that adapts on the fly to your every movement. So I think we'll see even more of that. What I would love to see is some kind of integrated SIM cards that help with bike theft, which is frustratingly rife in the UK at least, especially e-bike theft because they're really expensive bikes. I think this year we'll see even more of that stuff become integrated from more of the brands and more of the manufacturers. So things that start talking to each other, uh, it starts talking to your phone a bit more, it's connected to the internet. Hey, not everyone wants it, but I think it would be something that we see in 2020. Number seven, this is big, e-bikes becoming accepted. When I first started riding an electric mountain bike about two years ago, people looked at it like it was some kind of alien creation. They saw it and they're like, what is that? And why do you need that? And is there something wrong with you? And as the year went by and as last year in 2019, it became more or less widely accepted. And when people saw an e-bike, they didn't really think too much of it. But I know it's different depending on whereabouts in the world you are. But I think 2020 is gonna be the year that e-bikes are just accepted and it's part of mountain biking. And as a reader of Pink Bike, the great mountain bike uh, website over the last few years, I've seen the acceptance rate of e-bikes, uh, or should I say less, negative comments that are written on e-bike articles and more and more acceptance and it becoming more and more mainstream. So I think 2020 will be the year where just e-bikes are normal, everyone gets it, everyone may have had a go on it and it's just one of those things that is a progression of the sport. Number eight, we're gonna see bigger batteries and smaller batteries and dual batteries. So some people wanna ride for 100 kilometers in one go. Just have an epic all dayer. And you could do that with a 700 watt hour battery or perhaps you could double up and have two 600 watt batteries. And that's really, really cool. So you can go for an all day, you could ride from London to Brighton. You could perhaps even do it twice if you wanted to. And I think we're gonna see more and more of that. I already mentioned it. Maybe we'll see it from Shimano this year. Uh, but I think we'll see bikes with bigger battery options. And on the flip side, I think we'll see bikes with smaller batteries. So if you get into lunchtime, nearly one o'clock, and you wanna go out for a quick blast and you've got a bike with a 250 watt hour battery, that bike is much, much lighter. It's gonna be more nimble, more agile. It's gonna feel more like a regular mountain bike. 
So on the flip side, I think we'll see bikes with smaller battery packs coming out. We've already seen it from Focus with their Shimano based bikes. They've got a 368 watt hour battery, I think it is, that helps keep the bike really nice and lightweight. But I'm sure we'll see it from different brands, different manufacturers have one in their range that has a lower weight and a lower battery capacity as well. But what about this? What about a bike that had three batteries, like three 250 watt hour batteries that you can slot into the frame? So if you wanna go out for a quick one hour blast, you've got that 250 watt hour, saves like a couple of kilos of weight. But if you're going out for an all dayer, you plop the other two in, and that's it, you're ready for an all day ride. I think that'd be really cool. I mean, it's probably an engineering nightmare, but hey, the challenge from us to these bike designers is to create really innovative products. And you know, this is something that I think would be a really cool option for us riders. Number nine, battery hire centers. Read on EMTB forums, which is by the way, is the best electric mountain bike website in the world. All the people that want to go and tour and want to fly to different countries and take their e-bikes with them, but they can't because of the restrictions on flying. And yeah, I get it. That's totally fair. It's difficult to take off a plane that's loaded with lots of stored energy on them. So I totally get that. But battery hire centers where you can just ship your bike like anyone else can do with a regular mountain bike and you can hire a battery because they are pretty standard. It's not like there's 50 or 60 different manufacturers. There's only a handful. I would love to take my Kinevo to the south of Spain and I can't really fly with it. I could drive, but it's a long old drive and I could fly and I'm sure I could find somewhere after a few phone calls. But for battery hire, I'd happily pay 30, 40 quid for a weekend to hire a battery and be able to take my bike pretty much anywhere in the world. So I think that's quite a good business opportunity for local bike shops. I know the initial investment in batteries is quite a lot of money because they're pretty expensive, but I think that'd be quite a good business for some bike shops. So I think for 2020, maybe a bit further, battery hire centers will see a lot of those all over the world. And lastly, number 10, bit of a shout out for my channel but I think that we're going to get to 50,000 e-bike fans from all over the world so I'm nearly at 30,000 people that subscribe to this channel and get this stuff delivered to their inbox this year when I look at the target and goal thing it says that I'm going to hit 50,000 so if you do like this content help me get to that 50,000 I kind of do all this stuff pretty much solo and I'm kind of winging it and trying to work out what works and what you guys like. So help me get to that 50,000 and hit that subscribe button. And that'd be awesome. That's what I'm predicting for 2020. All right, guys, hope you like that. If you did, let me know. Let me know your predictions down below because I'm really interested. I love kind of geeking out and talking about all this stuff. I love technology and I love the electric mountain bike scene. I'll catch up with you all soon. Cheers. Bye bye.